Welcome to the Learning Loop Podcast, your best source for educational insights and trends. I'm Chris, your host. Today's special guest is Rachel. Rachel is a fourth grade teacher in Texas. Rachel is a superstar teacher who is a pro at bringing powerful learning to all her students. In our talk today, Rachel will tell us how she overcomes barriers, how she strategizes her classes, and how she can be more efficient and effective as a teacher. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Of course. We are so excited to hear all your amazing answers as we jump right <laughs> in. Can you start by just sharing a time when Seesaw made a positive difference in your students' learning or engagement? Oh, definitely. There's so many stories. Uh, that's what I love about Seesaw. Um, number one for me is the creativity side, and that's why there's so many stories like that, is that my students have the opportunity to share the way they need to and really make those connections. And so when parents and I are all in that loop, <laughs> as we say now, um, we're seeing beautiful things and seeing um, the connections that the students are making that maybe we wouldn't have caught otherwise. So yeah. we're just so stuck in like algorithms a lot of the times and the explanation part, the recording part or drawing a picture or just having the option for those things sometimes can make such a difference for a student and really bring those aha moments to families and then teachers too to help struggling students or even extend activities for um, people too, or students as well. So I just, that's it. I mean, one specific time. Do you want one specific time? You can, you're welcome to continue to elaborate if you want. Okay. So I do have one story and this was an ESL student and I was actually teaching in a, like a very, very, very tiny town, um, very North of Texas. And so very limited English. And so I guess I should say ELL, um, but the student was like learning to use the record button and was trying to read a passage and just, it was able to feel confident on CSEL versus reading aloud to me and where some teachers might take offense to that. It gave him like the outlet he needed and the platform he needed to express and make mistakes and learn from them. And I just saw so much growth in that. And parents saw it too and heard it. And we were like, oh my gosh, look at all this evidence we have too. And it was just, I was able to get running records from it. So I said, I don't care if <laughs> you like, if this is the way that we're getting our data, I'm happy. And we got to praise and eventually he was able to read to me too. So it was just beautiful. So yay. Wow, that's so amazing. And I, I think you were speaking to, you know, starting to personalize that learning and differentiate that a little bit. And I just love how you found success in really providing your students with what they need and, and allowing them to use tools that are flexible for them to showcase their understanding in a way that, that really fits them. I think that's amazing that you found that perfect balance there. Seesaw does a good job of allowing that. So I think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, backing up the lens, potentially beyond Seesaw, what are some of like your go-to instructional strategies that you have found just are really, really successful when you use Seesaw, when you implement it? Uh, what are some of those bigger picture things that you have found to just really combo well with Seesaw in your classroom? That's awesome. I'm glad you asked that. Um, I am a project-based learning classroom, so I'm finding Seesaw... <laughs> Everything, every grade I've taught really has changed. And I'm like, oh, no, Seesaw still works. Oh, great. <laughs> like, perfect. Because I'm just seeing the need for that creative side and the freedom for the choice part. And so project-based learning is a lot about the real-world environment and bringing all of students' real problems and how we can maybe solve them. So like currently our playground is a little rough in the field. Our actual playground, beautiful. I mean, I mean, incredible. Probably one of the best playgrounds in our area. The field, on the other hand, goat heads, like dirt, like eesh, we got to fix it, right? So um, including Seesaw in the K-12 
Can we go take pictures of our fields? Can we get yeah. close-ups? Can we measure? Can we draw on top of it and put our area perimeter? You know, mm-hmm. so because I'm doing math, I'm trying to include as many math um, computations as possible in this. Um, we're writing word problems. We're going to do some community work eventually. Sure. So we're getting to that part probably in the second semester, but it's going to be a project that hopefully is being presented to the correct people in our community in a way for a possible solution for our field, mm-hmm. whether it gets solved or not. I think that it's meaningful learning. Um, Seesaw mm-hmm. always lends the friendly hand that I need to, oh, I need photos. Perfect. Seesaw. You know, um, I need them to to annotate and, and draw real quick. Oh, Seesaw. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just that continually, that freedom, the presenting, students are able to talk over their drawings. And yeah. um, so we're going to get to the pre- presentation part of their projects as well. And I always do presentations on Seesaw. The kids love it. They take it as their own little um, video star. So I love their favorite thing. Click like and subscribe at the end. (laughs) So, you know, that's how I'm continually using Seesaw. It just lends itself so kind to every grade level that I've taught. Kinder, pre-K, first, second, and now I'm in fourth. So. Sure. That's so awesome. I, I think, you know, you, you having, uh, sharing a little bit about that PBL is, it's making my teacher heart sing. You know, I was at a PBL school and I love seeing those things come to life. And, you know, I think of what kids are really yearning for is that real world connection to understanding and, and learning that's there. And you're finding that perfect balance and using Seesaw to also, you know, help that to move forward versus just kind of capturing pictures or capturing moments, you're using that to really enhance that learning that's happening. So that's so awesome to hear. And I'm, I, I, I selfishly kind of wish that I was a student in your classroom sometimes as you right. told that, because uh, it just sounds so fun. That's awesome. Come on anytime. You can come help us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you spoke earlier about, you know, having students with diverse needs in your classroom. We know almost every classroom in, in the world has students who have different needs, uh, diverse needs. How are you using Seesaw to really make sure that you're addressing those needs appropriately? And what are some things that maybe you could share with the audience of like, here are some of my go-to things that I think about uh, to make sure that I'm addressing all those diverse needs in my classroom? I love that. <clears throat> um. Oh, I love that. I'm definitely on the teaching the whole student side of things as well. Um, mind and all the way to their hearts and their skills and their social, emotional needs. And so a lot of the times, you know, they're like, it's math class. And I'm like, and we're going to work on how we are communicating with each other. And we're going to work on how teamwork and collaboration is much more important right now than this that we were continuing learning. Um, so a lot of the times um, in Seesaw, I can record myself reading um, a book and I am part of an organization here locally. Actually, it's nationally. It's called the Leaders Readers Network, but they're divi- diverse books and I'm constantly bringing those into Seesaw videos and reading them and we're doing lessons and if it connects to math, I'm doing math lessons as well into Seesaw as well. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm really trying to get those those reflection questions in there to students to have them monitoring themselves more. So I want them to be thinking about, am I just a calculator? Mm-hmm. Am I doing this for a purpose and a goal yeah. to, for myself, you know, to be a successful person later on. And to be that, do I need some other skills on getting along with others? Do I need to collaborate well with others? Does kindness, does that need to be included? Does Mm -hmm. in getting along with others and the diversity that we're seeing in our classroom and the needs of others, are we still focused on the unfairness? Are we accepting that Others need things, and that's okay. So um, 
we do slow, slow down a lot of our learning for that. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of gaps to be filled and our world, I think strongly needs that. And so um, I try to do that as much as possible. Yeah. And I see so has some really good stuff out there already. And so a lot of the times I'm just hearting, <laughs> pushing yeah. the heart button, editing yep. and put my voice yep. instructions over, maybe adding a few things and, I love it. <laughs> so good. So good. I think you too, you were talking about when you're pulling in books that connect with your students and really show that too, you're, you're just trying to, and you spoke to this earlier in PBL, you're really trying to get to that deeper level of connection. You know, it's, it's more than just learning about math. Like you were saying, it's more than just science. We're here to grow as a whole person and we're here to grow you know, our, our academics in our head, but also ourselves as a person and as a contributor into the society. So I think that, um, you know, you, your, your mindset on that and developing the whole child, like you said, is so positive for everybody who comes in and can just use that as, as a boost into their next grade as they keep going. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to jump, we have three more questions left. We're going to jump to our loopy question, which is a fun question uh, designed to just get a unique response from you. Um, it's time for dessert. Everybody loves dessert in the whole world. If you had to choose just one dessert that you were going to eat for every meal or, or and only one dessert that you could only eat, what would that one dessert be? You can't have other desserts, keep in mind. This is the one dessert that you get to have for the rest of your life. What would you choose? Forever. And it has to be one flavor. It, Pie. No, it doesn't have to be. We'll say okay. it that way. Pie. Pie. Yes. yes. That's a good one. That's a good, like homemade even, authentic. It doesn't even matter, but I like pies. <laughs> um, I was going to say ice cream, but lately ice cream hasn't been my friend. So yeah. pies, pies have been my friend for a long time. <laughs> love it. Love what it. Your answer, nothing... though, I have to know. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a really good, good pie that's been, uh, you know, made with love and care and is warm and coming straight out of the oven. That, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's so just comforting, much. right? <laughs> it's so, so comforting, especially now that we're thinking about the holidays coming up. I, I mean, I think that's I like, now, think about like pie. why I answered that? Maybe. What's your answer, though? <laughs> My answer, um, one dessert. You know, I would have to say I'm a big fan of, like, cookies. Um, maybe, like, chocolate chip cookies if I had to be really specific. But, <laughs> um, you know, you get some salty, you get some sweet, you get some chocolate. And so they're also pretty portable. You know, you can throw it in a lunchbox or, you know, in a little baggie for something. So you got to find the mini pies. Like... <laughs> yeah. You can throw yeah. those out. <laughs> You could. You can make mini pies. Those yeah, mini good. pies. <laughs> awesome. Well, Love two it. more quick questions, and then we'll kind of close up. Um, you know, you're you're a very experienced teacher. You've taught many different grades. So when you think about how you balance uh, the uh, the curriculum and or the academic standards that you have to deliver on, but also engagement for students and technology integration. What kind of things do you think about to make sure that you're balancing that as best as possible uh, so that people listening can can start to think about that the same way that you are? Great question. Um, I'm a blended learner, certified educator as well. And so I believe in that choice as well. And I always tell them to, I said, Seesaw super fun. Um, I love touching the screen. We have Chromebooks in our classroom. Um, before Chromebooks, we had iPads. You could touch those too. And I said, is so fun. You can touch the screen. You don't have to. You can use your mouse. Um, and I said, but if you're just more of a paper person, guess what? You got that option. So like kind of just bring in that, that like you can choose. But guess what? You're going to take a picture on Seesaw so I can see that proof. Um, they love that. and. So to me, it's it's less about what I prefer and more about what makes them comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want that balance. I want to, them to know that sometimes we are going to be, you know, working with their clear touch. And sometimes you are going to be starting on this platform, but then you always have the option to go to 
grab scratch paper. You have the option to go grab your journal. Um, you have the option always to use paper and pencil and then, you know, use the platform that we're on. Um, as we're finding out in, you know, like Texas, every um, standardized test is digital. So they need to be able to transfer that anyways. So giving them that option all the time, like it's setting them up for a success later on. So it was like perfect because when I first got here, everyone was like, what are you using? No, we use this or something. And I said, no, I think this is where the way to go. Done a couple mm -hmm. trainings here. They're like, oh, we see now. And I'm like, right. You know, like the transfer there is there, the connections there. And that was before we went full um, standardized testing online. And they're like, oh, that makes sense now that they need that organization skill to go from paper to, you know, that online platform. And I use yeah. so many digital tools, but nothing like Seesaw because it's just so friendly. Like the creativity is just so friendly for students. They absolutely love it. Um, and that's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I so. love that. I, my favorite quote that you said here, and I wish that we could just make this bold and sing it from the from everywhere uh when you said it, what i want for my students is less about what i prefer and it's about what they prefer um i think that is that's such a powerful switch that you've made in allowing your students to own that learning and showcase what they understand in their own way that you know i'm i'm sure your students just love that empowerment that they have mm -hmm. uh, and the ability to have that flexible way of showing their understanding Right. I hope so. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, final question here. When we think about closing up our episode, we always try to provide advice to people who are listening. Any last quick steps or things that they can just take away and, and build right into their routine and into their understanding. So what advice would you give to a teacher who is either new to Seesaw or new to teaching and wants to start to use Seesaw the way that you do? What advice would you give them? Maybe one, two, three steps um, that they could start with that just really would help them again to get to the point that you are eventually, but what would you ask them to start with? Um, one of my favorite things to start with is a Seesaw created lesson about using the tools. I start with this every year. I've made it my own a little bit, just kind of put some bitmojis in there, of course, or kind of put my own voice in there. Um, I like arrows. I like the seesaw arrows, so I like point to things. <laughs> I like to pop those in there. But there's a seesaw created lesson, and it's specifically about how to use the tools. And it's like, get to know me, get to know seesaw. And so they're talking about themselves, but they're also getting to know seesaw and they're using the tools. Teachers also are making an example of it. So before they're sending it out and assigning it to students, they're able to make their selves mm -hmm. examples. So they're mm -hmm. getting used to the tools. Um, and then because Seesaw created it and y'all are fabulous, fabulous, there's teacher <laughs> notes on how do you edit? How do you create your own? How do you guide your students through this? Um, something I didn't have back in the day that I love now is that present to class button. So that's encouragement too. Like, oh, it's so beautiful. And that's where I would start too. And I'm now I'm starting there almost every lesson. I'm like, this is sure. oh, so awesome. It's so nice. And then I always say, don't be afraid to use the sample student and yep. do the whole entire lesson. Do it quickly. They're not mm -hmm. going to remember. It's okay. You can just do it. Do the lesson. Just be like, wow, this is what you're doing on Seesaw today. Yeah. And then you can move on. They can go try it out. It's okay. If it looks exactly like yours to start out, you want it them to be still successful and happy. And so that's my advice. So good. So good. Very, very practical steps too. And, uh, you know, easy things that can be quickly and easily found for any teacher who's jumping into Seesaw brand new. So I think that's the best advice that I could ever give as well. So I, I do think that's perfectly spot on as you, uh, as you shared them. Thank you. 
Rachel, we are at time. I just want to say thank you, thank you so much for everything you do for kids and everything you're doing for the larger community around you who's learning from what you're doing in your classroom. Thanks for taking time here today to be with us uh, because we so appreciate your wonderful answers and the steps that you gave us for everybody to take away and continue their journey with Seesaw in their classroom. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. Bye.